Hello, my name is Dana Dukmursina and I am an EIT digital student at Art University. Today I'm going to present my master thesis presentation and the topic is Road Marking Condition Monitoring and Classification Using Deep Learning for City of Helsinki. This project was done with Art University and City of Helsinki. Table of Contents Today, I will start with the introduction, the motivation for conducting this research, and my research questions. Next is the background section. Here, I will talk about overall process of object detection based on traditional methods and deep learning methods. Next is a related work section. Here, I will assess the performance of different research papers that done some work in the area of zebra crossing recognition. Next is a data set. Here I will tell about the steps which were involved in data gathering, data preparation. Next is the experimental part. Here I will tell about testing Lutinonet and Yolo 5 on our data set. And I will conclude my presentation with the results obtained from experimental part and give conclusion. Problem definition and background. Uh, smart cities are the term that constantly appears in the media. The meaning of the term is vague, as everything that is more technologically advanced is perceived as smart. However, the main goal in designing smart cities should be to enhance the quality of life of the citizens. Safety of citizens is also one of the main concerns that can prevent adaptation of some technology, for example, autonomous driving cars. But this also leads to drastic improvements as it motivates like, uh, technologies like computer vision, uh, artificial intelligence to evolve rapidly. The city of Helsinki is rapidly adapting new smart technology to meet the needs of increased urbanization and tourism and to ease the life of the citizens. Vigorous planning of road markings location prevents traffic accidents by maintaining the traffic flow order. The city of Helsinki developed open map service that allows to assess the aerial photographs of the Helsinki to view city plans, the location of the buildings and the roads. This data will help in management as the most important part in management is to be aware of the current situation, to monitor and take corresponding steps towards improving the planning. And one of them can be scheduling in advance the road maintenance, which will avoid overdue repairs. This paper was motivated by helping city of Helsinki with the road market maintenance. And the goal is to try to classify road markings into five categories. On this slide you can see the classification Right, However, the data set that we gathered with the help of the Carta.hel contain satellite images which do not have a good resolution. We got only 716 images uh, which had 100 by 100 size. And here on the slide, you can see the problems that occurred with the, the real-life satellite data. First is the uh, occlusions. There are shadows from trees, buildings, pedestrian vehicles. On the second photo, you can see that images are from different illumination. For example, it could be sunny or cloudy, or it could be that it was evening or daytime. Also, images had different shapes, but that is explained by the different angles from which the images were captured. Next, you can see tram and bicycle markings. 
that go through pedestrian crossings. And uh, sometimes also the same category would look totally different. For example, here, these two road cross markings should be of category one, but they do not look similar. That's why the problem for our developed algorithm is to categorize these two road markings into one category and to learn the features that corresponds for each class. Moreover, there were such cases that on one image there were several crossings and sometimes some road markings were almost vanished, as you can see here. So my research question is the feasibility and ability of neural network to properly learn features which are required for classification of pedestrian road markings and to assess the performance of the design deep learning based method based on average precision and speed and also to assess the training time. Research method. Here you can see the overall flow of the conducted research. First, we will start with the traditional object detectors. Traditional object detection was mainly based on image processing techniques. We tried to make some experiments with our data. In particular, we applied Gaussian blue plus edge detection, thresholding, we tried to find whole lines and to do template matching. In general, if we would take only one picture and try to apply all these techniques, we will get pretty good results. However, our images are very different. They have different illumination, which can lead to different thresholds for each image. That's why we thought that the approach of using traditional based methods will not be scalable for the new data and will also require a lot of manual work and handcrafting features. However, traditional methods have some advantages. They rely on color and geometrical properties and that is very explainable. And uh, it is they are lightweight, they do not require much of computing power. You can see how this decision process is done compared to deep learning models, which are black box models. Also, traditional methods are suitable for small data sets. And it's currently easy to implement it with OpenCV. However, as we talked about disadvantages, like they are not robust to noise, they require individual tuning, manual coding, and that they are not scalable towards new data, all that motivated us to use deep learning based approach. Deep learning based model models are considered as a black boxes. However, the way that neural network is able to learn hierarchical features, for example, starting from some edges, corners, and then going to some patterns. For example, in the face recognition, it can represent and learn more abstract concepts. In other words, just inputting pure raw image and getting as an output some high-level semantic information is already a superpower of deep learning-based methods. Here we consider convolutional neural networks. The main difference from artificial neural networks that are just a stack of fully connected layers is that artificial neural networks, they do not consider the local connectivity of the pixels. However, CNNs, they were designed specifically to tackle these problems. In convolutional neural networks, the neurons of the previous the current layer are not fully connected. There is a special kernel that goes through the image and collects 
relevant information. This little kernel is uh, based on some image processing techniques. So sometimes some kernels can extract edges, corners, and stacking all this information in the feature maps, we can get very useful high-level information. In this picture, there is a general over, overview of the basic object detector. It consists of the input. Here we can see the image of the cat is included. Then there is a convolutional backbone that can be ResNet, Inception. There are currently very different and uh, task-specific backbones available. And classifier head. Usually for our problem of object localization, our classifier, our output should be classification. So the neural network should assign the label and also bounding box localization. So it should output the coordinates of the bounding box. So as we said, deep learning based object detectors, they are able to learn abstract concepts and hierarchical features without handcrafting the feature. However, they require the label data, which is little of disadvantage as it takes a lot of time to manually label the data. Generally, object detectors are divided into two categories two-stage object detectors and one-stage. In two-stage object detectors, there is first stage, which consists of region proposal. In this stage, some sliding window is sliding the image or on the feature maps and trying to extract interesting regions and then run them through convolutional neural network to get the bounding boxes and labels. Here in one stage detectors, they consider image as they consider whole image as uh, of like interesting regions and then they do the feature extraction of the whole image. Usually, two-stage object detectors are robust and they give more accuracy. One-stage object detectors were motivated by the speed. That's why they lose, like, lose some points in accuracy, but they are very crucial for, for example, for real-time object detection. So next. I will talk about the experimental part and first I will talk about data, uh, apply data augmentation and then about FTMNet and development implementation. As was mentioned before, the city of Helsinki has its own service to extract your data. With the help of this service, we could extract 100 or 1392 images. Next, we labeled the data manually. We utilized the label IMG tool, which um, provides us help in uh, drawing bounding box and then assigning the category. In total, we got 716 images with 958 annotation. This was because some um, images contained more than one road marking. And also we discarded some images that were poor quality or there were some duplicated images. Uh, we, here you can see our distribution of the classes and we don't have a good balanced data our classes 1 and 2 lack some samples when class 4 is has too many images 
almost 50% of the data set. We applied some data augmentation, data preprocessing techniques to tackle this problem of small data set. As we know that deep neural networks, they benefit from the large data set and in case of small data set, it's recommended to do data augmentation and also transfer learning. So for data preprocessing, we utilized not as, as grayscale. Here we can take only one channel. Here scale gives us only one channel. Uh, after adjusting the contrast, it sharpens our contrast. And also we added noise of 3%. Uh, added noise can tackle the adversarial attacks. Adversarial attacks are happening when we can fool the network by adding specific noise. Uh, like for example, you can fool networks to see person, but it, it is for example some toy. And we apply data augmentation. Uh, we use shear transformation, plus minus 15 degrees. That helps us with uh, different uh, angle of views, because we can see that some road, mark road markings were taken under different angles. That's why some will have some shear, some will not, but applying to all the data shear transformation can tackle this problem. And also we applied blur and uh, we also stretch all our data set by 414 to 414 size. The first uh, method that we applied was retina net. Retina net main features are focal loss which can give some weights, more weights for misclassified examples, and also feature pyramid net. The pyramid net can help in uh, distinguishing small objects. Small object recognition currently was a huge problem in previous object detectors. And uh, comparing retina net to other object detectors that occurred before Retina Net, like Buster, RCNN, Yellow version 3. Retina Net performed the best in the Coco dataset with 40 m in average precision. That's why we wanted to use Retina Net. When we were training, we applied these parameters for the training. We trained Retina Net with TensorFlow 2.3 and Keras 2.4 on Google Cloud. We used Pfizer implementation. We applied transfer learning. So transfer learning is reducing weights from the previous pre-trained model or just reducing weights from after running the model, uh, creating checkpoints and then reusing the weights that were generated through that checkpoint. It took about one hour for each 10 epochs with 300 steps. And it took about 0 0.05 seconds for inference. The results of Retina Net were not good. We achieved only after 36 epochs about 31 in average precision. We found that in general Retina Net gives good enough localization performance. We can see here that volunteer boxes are tight. However, we can see that it has many labels, so the neural network doesn't know for sure what category it is. So 
our future goal is to train the network longer or to gather bigger data set. Moreover, we can alter the predefined anchor boxes. Maybe it can boost the performance because the frequencies uh, actually require different size anchor boxes. The next method was YOLO5. YOLO5 was designed in 2020 and it actually has a lot of controversy around it. However, the performance of the related work was good, so we decided to use it. The features of YOLO5 is usage of mosaic data augmentation which involves stacking four images at different ratio as an input that helps with especially for small uh, images because it can preserve their ratio. The so YOLO5 also has anchors which are chosen using k-means and generic algorithms. This is actually much better because in RetinaNet uh, there is a predefined set of anchors. Also, YOLO5 has methods that can decrease parameters and uh, also some feature aggregation which preserves special information. I will not go deeply in this because it will require a lot of background information. In general, YOLO5 has as you can see, four models. You can see that yellow 5S performs the worst from all the yellow 5 family. We decided to compare how yellow 5S and yellow 5L will perform on our dataset. Yellow 5 actually requires the special format. It's a txt file with uh, four coordinates and a special YAML file. Uh, we could use RoboFlow software, which helped us quickly and easily import data in our required format. Uh, we obtained two datasets because we wanted to test how image, like applied image processing, will affect the performance. Mm -hmm. So we had two data sets, one, uh, and each had 1,827 images. We applied on the first data, sa data set some preprocessing as we resized it, uh, and also had one color channel grayscale transformation. Uh, we did after adjustment of the contrast with adaptive equalization, and uh, for data augmentation, we used share and we added noise. Second data set uh, from all the preprocessing only had resizing, so it preserved three color channels. And we had the uh, only share transformation. So we ran a total four experiments. Just two experiments were done with Yolo 5S, the smaller model, and we ran it only 400 epochs but they were applied in different datasets. And uh, two others were done with the yellow 5 large model. And we used uh, more epochs, 150. In general, we can see from here that the dataset 2 took longer time for training, as it contained images with all three color channels. So it took double time. And we can see also the performance was slightly better for the dataset 2. Moreover, we can see that YOLO 5L was outperforming YOLO 5S. And of course, it was because we ran more epochs. And the maximum mean average precision that we achieved was 0 
Here is a comparison between two yellow large models, but on different data sets. In blue is a data set which contains three color channels. So we can say that uh, channel information is still important. However, converting it, the data into grayscale gives us less than 50% of the training time and not losing so much accuracy. Yellow 5 achieved greater training time compared to RetinaNet. With same for hours, we achieved for RetinaNet only an average precision of 0.31 and for Yellow we achieved double of it. So Yellow 5 was our favorite. And also inference time for yellow was 0 0.070 seconds and for the genome net 0 0.05. Here you can see the inference done by yellow 5 on the test data. In general, it performed well. Example, the image of second class, fourth class are done correctly. In general, we would suggest to use Yellow 5 as it gives better accuracy, it has better training time and inference time.